should we pray for the canonization of leaders such as Franco, Dolphus, etc.? Same, same. I mean, uh, Dolphus, I mean, certainly his, his faith was one of the reasons the Nazis hated him and killed him. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Franco was certainly a devout Catholic. I mean, being devout doesn't by itself make you a saint. It just makes you sane and perspicacious. Perspicacious? Perspicacious. Oh, that's another word they didn't teach Isn't you. that a, a big vocabulary? Uh, yeah, no. Perspicacious is uh, seeing how things are. Oh, seeing how things are. Okay. Figuring out how things work. Okay. See, a devout Catholic is someone who understands the realities of the universe and lives according to them to the best of his ability. I mean, if I know I'll go to hell if I do this and such, and I'm absolutely sure I will, I'm not going to do that. Right. That's just reality. Yeah. That's all. And you may look at that and say, boy, Charles has a, you know, he's really a holy person. He never does anything like that. Eh, not necessarily. It's just Charles knows which way the wind blows. Yeah. Which way is up. There's just not a moron. Moron. A moron. So, uh, you know, being a devout Catholic doesn't necessarily mean you're virtuous or, or good, nice. It just means you're sane and you know how things work. But, no, of course you can pray for people like that. Uh, you can pray for anybody's canonization you want. And then, because where do you think these causes come from? Mm. It's not from the top up, you know, some Pope looks around and says, We must canonize someone today. Who do we canonize? It, you can pray for anyone you want. You can pray for anyone you want, but I mean, obviously, you should try to try to look for people with some traction. Some traction. Well, that's a good idea. There are some very, very strange uh, people out there who try to defend Hitler and Hitler's Catholicism. Okay, should, we, should we pray for Hitler's canonization? I wouldn't. Uh, you just said we could pray for anybody. Well, you can. I just said I would. <laughs> I said you can. That doesn't mean I will. But see, that goes back to where. To what I said earlier about you know Queen Isabella, uh, uh, Dorothy Day, Julius Neri. Every one of those three has violent, violent fans and violent, violent opponents. Uh -huh. Every one of them. Uh, personally, I wish them all well, simply because uh, you know the, the the more the more people who were canonized who had really bad peccadilloes, the likelier it is I can get to heaven. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for the odds going up in my favor. But seriously, uh, no, I mean, it, 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 I certainly wouldn't pray for Hitler. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because I know too much. Thank goodness. But, and, and see, that's the other thing. I mean, study these guys. If you're really interested in Franco, really interested in uh, Adolfo's no, study their lives. On what basis would they be canonized? Remember, what is canonization? Canonization is the church saying this person is in heaven. Yeah. Infallibly. Okay. How does she do that? Well, the first thing she does is she looks very carefully at the life of the person. She looks for glaring heresy. She looks for glaring errors in judgment. She looks for all kinds of stuff. Um, Thomas a. Beckett, or sorry, um, Thomas a. Kempis, who wrote... Uh, the uh, imitation of Christ will never be canonized. The reason why it will never be canonized is because part of the process is they dig you up to see what state your body's in. Sometimes the people are corrupt, all sorts of things. St. Anthony of Padua was corrupt except his tongue. Which was weird, <laughs> but I mean it spoke to his eloquence. Yeah. Uh, but they dug up Thomas the Campus, and what they found was that apparently after they buried, it was a premature burial. He'd woken up in the coffin and chewed his hands. Now, that could mean that he had had final despair. It doesn't mean he did. Yeah. And you can even pray privately to Thomas the Campus if you like, but that cause is never going to go any further than that. Yeah. Just because... Yeah, there, there needs to be no doubt. There needs to be no doubt. Uh, yet, that doesn't keep you from having a uh, private veneration to any servant of, servant of God you like. Um, my own father uh, was named Guy, Guy, which is not a name in our family, after a very, very popular then 
uh, a then very popular servant of God, called Guy de Fonganon, who was this uh, little French noble boy who died of the influenza or something in 1918 or six or something. Mm -hmm. He was the youngest person ever to be proposed for canonization. Uh, and for whatever reason, they decided it wasn't going to go any further. Yeah. But there's still institutions named after him. Um, you know, my dad was uh, had a holding card of him uh, because it was his namesake. Right. So these are these are areas where the church allows a lot of personal liberty, a personal freedom, mm -hmm. uh, because it's in people getting together and pushing, and eventually, eventually the, these examples of holiness get to be known. And obviously, you're not going to push them unless you know something about yeah, them, you right. learn something about them. So, I, I mean, when people say, well, is it, is it okay to venerate so and so uh, privately? As long as they're not a notorious evil liver and so on and so forth, and you think they might have a, uh, a swing at it, go ahead and, you know, organize some group, uh, friends of so and so to study up on their lives, see if there's anything that would really knock them out of the uh, out of the ring. I mean, Dorothy Day had a kid out of wedlock. Okay. You see, so uh, it's the entirety of their life yeah. that they look at. Yeah. Not one little piece. Yeah. And that's also where people have to avoid being, well, I can't believe so-and-so could be a saint. Look at what they did. Well, other than proposing your judgment to be greater than the church's, especially after she's uh, certified one or two or three miracles okay. to the person's favor, um, I mean, I honestly think, myself included, that most of us wouldn't know a real living saint if she popped us in the head. Uh, I have a, a question. Um, how is it that having a kid out of wedlock doesn't auto disqualify you but then when you're buried alive and you chew your fingers because we know what happened with the kid out of wedlock she raised her as a catholic okay and she ended up as devout as her mother okay whereas with the chewing on the thing we don't know what happened with that story mm, okay I see I mean then we know she was penitent which we can't know about Thomas Akempis I mean, maybe he despaired, but then completely repented of it. In which case, he'd be in heaven. That's what I'm saying. We don't know that he's not in heaven. It's the doubt. I see. I mean, if, if, she, had, uh, if she had died, uh, you know, and her daughter had been, you know, said my mother was a phony and a fraud, and, uh, uh, you know, she, she was this and that, that might have very well been a thing against her, simply because we can't know the answer. Uh-huh. But in the case of Dorothy Day, uh, we know what the story, how the story ended up. She, I see. She raised the kid in the church. She was very uh, penitent for the life she led. We know that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's, there are a lot of saints who have lived lives at some point in their times that were less than saintly. Right. But being a saint is where you are at the moment of death. Ah, I see. With Charles I, he says, I die a member of the Church of England as I found it under my father. One of the things that people who are experts in that era have pointed out is that people who were really, who were anti-Roman at that time, just didn't say that. They say, I die a member of the Protestant Church of England. Mm. Okay. They didn't mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... Uh, you have all sorts of interesting nits and pieces, but this stuff, at the end of the day, can only really be brought up by a formal cause and a formal investigation. But you can't have that until the thing becomes something. Yeah. You see? Yeah, it can't just pop, come out of thin air. Yeah. Yeah. And that I mean, means yeah. that, you, you know, you've got to sit down with yourself, with friends or whatever, uh, and see if there's anything to this. And if there is, great. And if there isn't, well... Mm -hmm. 